I watched the video today. The guy said, always say good things about your wife. And part, oh yeah. I wonder what she says about me though, Grace, when I'm not around. No, it's <laughs> down, it's <Stop>. down. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, I appreciate that. But believe it or not, people see us, us out in public because, I don't know, I guess we give off this aura or whatever, but people see us in public and they get mad. I, we don't know why, we just, because our communication is exceptional, like we could talk about anything. And we, she's a laugher though. She likes to, you know, she likes to crack up and everything. And people get mad at us. One dude, we's, we's getting on the bus going somewhere. And we were on the bus talking. And the guy was like, you, you two act like you're the only ones on the bus. I said, well, we are, we are in our world. <laughs> hey nieces and nephews, Uncle Jay here. So my purpose is to come before you and to encourage you. And I want us to walk in that dominion, in that power. Hey, nieces and nephews, Uncle Jay's here. JayOnline.store, where you find the best in Christian motivation apparel. Just wanted to go live. It's a message I've been trying to get out all day. I recorded the message actually like two, three times and the message was deleted. So I just decided to come live. I'm not gonna let the enemy stop me from getting out the word of God to you, to the people of God. I'd like to welcome you to this live stream. Coffee with Uncle Jay, come in, have a cup of coffee. Yes, it's late night, but I love coffee. So come in and have a cup of coffee with Uncle Jay. Hope you all are doing well today. Say hello. Let me know you're in the room. Let me know everything is good with you. I pray that you're trusting in Jesus Christ today, that you continue to hope in him, continue to believe in him. As we look around in our society, in our world, but when you look around in the world, we still are dealing with the effects of the pandemic. Thousands of people are still dying every day. People are losing their jobs still. Businesses are closing. Schools are closed. And people are looking around and they're wondering, where is God? They're asking the question, is God real? A lot of people are falling away, the people that believe. I wanted to come to you today and just encourage you to let you know that whatever you're going through, no matter what it is, God is with you. As we look at the situation of death that's all around us today like i know like two people that died last week since last year i probably know like 30 people that have died but as we look at the 23rd psalm david said yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i don't have to fear no evil but thou art with me and that's what i want you to understand today god is with you he said lo i am with you always even until the very end he promised to never leave you. He promised to never forsake you. He said he will be right there with you up to the very end. But think about Peter, he wrote, he said, don't think it's strange the fiery trials which come to test you as something strange that has happened to you. Don't think it's strange when you fall into to different trials and tribulations, the things that we are going through. Don't think it's strange because we're all going through it. Now I think about Peter, when Jesus died before he resurrected, Peter, who had denied Christ, he said to the other disciples, he said he was gonna go fishing. And all the other disciples, they said they were gonna go fishing with him. They were fishing all night and they didn't catch anything. And then a man appeared at the shore and he said, did you catch anything? They said, no, we haven't caught anything. He said, take your net and cast it to the right side and you will catch a great catch. They took their net, they cast it to the right side and they caught him a great multitude of fish that the net almost broke. The disciples who were in the boat, they went ashore and they saw that was Jesus. They went and yelled back and Peter said, it's the Lord. And Peter, he didn't have his cloak on. He threw on his cloak and he jumped in the water and he swam to shore to help them with the catch. But Peter took off his cloak. He had his cloak off. And Peter was kind of ashamed that Jesus came to the shore because he had denied Christ and he thought God was coming to punish him. But we know God showed grace to Peter and Peter was one of the first ones to preach on the day of Pentecost. But my whole point is maybe you're like the disciples, you're discouraged, you're disappointed and you're looking around and you see the enemy, he's roaring like a lion and seems like, you know, he's bigger than God and that he's doing damage and God is not with you or God is not doing anything. Maybe you're taking off your cloak like Peter did 
and you've been fishing all night long. You've been praying and praying and still catching nothing. But today I want you to cast your net into the water. You will catch a great catch today. I want you to continue to have trust and confidence in Jesus Christ. All things will work together for good to them who love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Jesus Christ will see you through no matter what the situation is. It doesn't matter what the situation is, death, corona, financial problem, whatever the situation, a marital problem, whatever the situation is, Jesus can see you through today. Don't take off your cloak as Peter did when they were discouraged because Christ had not risen from the dead yet. Because Peter made a mistake and he denied Christ three times. Don't take off your cloak. I want you to hold on to your faith. Continue to put on the word of God because Jesus will see you through. The Bible says faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Many times when Jesus did a miracle in others' life, he said, by your faith, be it unto you. So I want you to hold on to Jesus Christ. Don't fall away. Don't take off your cloak. Hold on to Jesus. Jesus will see you through. Jesus went to the disciples. He was preaching when he first met Peter and the disciples. And he was on the boat with Peter. And he had preached for a while. And he was on his boat. He told Peter, cast your nets into the deep. Peter, he said, we've been toiling all night long. We have caught nothing. But nevertheless, since you said it, we're going to cast the net. And when they cast the net, they caught a multitude of food, fish that the net broke. But the whole point, Jesus told him to cast his nets, plural, and Peter cast one net. So what I'm saying to you today, what is God saying about your situation today? You might have been toiling all night long. You might have been praying and praying and praying and not seeing anything happen in your life. But do not count it strange, the fiery trials that have come upon you. Even Paul, he said, no temptation has overtaken, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not put no more in than you're able to bear. But with every temptation, he makes a way of escape that you can bear. You're talking about going through the fire. I'm reminded of the Hebrew boys in the Old Testament, in the book of Daniel, the third chapter. Nebuchadnezzar, he was the king of Babylon at the time, and the Jews was in captivity. And Nebuchadnezzar had made a gold statue and he had put out a decree that everyone was to, when they heard the music play, that they were supposed to bow down to the statue. But the Hebrew boys, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, they refused to bow down to the statue. And the decree was anyone that didn't bow down to the statue was going to be thrown into the fiery furnace. The music played, the Hebrew boys did not bow down, Nebuchadnezzar threw them in the fiery furnace. The Bible says that the fire was intensified seven times and they were thrown in the fiery furnace. Nebuchadnezzar, when he looked in the fire, he said, didn't we throw three into, into the fire? Why do I see a fourth who looks like the son of God? What I'm saying to you, and the Bible says when they were taken out of the fire, their clothes didn't burn. Their hair wasn't singed. They didn't smell like smoke. I'm talking about going through the fire. Jesus will go through the fire with you today. Don't count it strange, the fiery trials that come upon you as something strange that has happened to you. The Bible says gold and silver is test by fire. You have to go through the fire so you can see if you will trust in Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter the situations that come upon you. I want you to hold on to Jesus Christ. Hold on to Jesus Christ. No temptation has overtaken but such is common to man, but God is faithful. God will not deny you the And y'all go check out the merch at jonline.store. You know, I have a clothing line, Christian clothing line. Head always up. Paul seven, stand eight. You know, go check out that, that Christian clothing. You go there, you buy, you make a purchase. You use the code TAKE10, T-A-K-E-10. Now you get a 10% discount on anything you purchase there. The Bible says all the promises of God in him are yes and amen. You can trust in Jesus Christ. Don't take off your cloak as Peter did. Hold on to the word of God. 
continue to speak the word of God to your situation. It only takes the faith the size of a mustard seed to move the mountains in your life. Jesus will go through the fiery furnace with you. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the very end. See, the devil doesn't want you to hear that. He wants you to give up today. He wants you to throw the towel in. He wants you to uh, go back to the old, like Peter did, going back to fishing. He wants you to go back to your old way of life. But we can't, the Bible says that we're not supposed to put our hand upon the plow and look back. I don't want you to look back like Lot's wife when she turned into Saul. I don't want you to look back. I want you to look forward. I want you to look to Jesus Christ. But someone needs to hear this. I want you to hold on to Jesus Christ. Even though I had a bad week this week. We all are going through it. That's what the Bible says. Don't count as strange. Don't think it's strange. We're all going through it. We all have to trust in Jesus Christ. We all have to walk by faith and not by sight. So I just want to encourage you. And that's another thing. The Bible says the strong shall bear the infirmities of the weak. When, you, when the church first started, the Bible says they shared all things common. They all were together building each other up in the faith. And that's what we need in the body of Christ. We have too many cliques. We have too many groups and, and so we're divided by denomination and all these other things. But the Bible says it's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one spirit, one, one God, one father. It's only one, one body. We all need to come together and support each other and bear the infirmities of each other so we can get through these things that we're going through. We all need to support each other because we're in this together. When we go to heaven, who you think gonna be there? We're all gonna be there together. <laughs> who you think, you think we're not all gonna be there? We're all gonna be there together. We're all gonna be ruling the earth together. We're gonna come back with Christ. We are the body of Christ. The Bible says that the head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. So we're all gonna be together. So why not while we're here on earth, we help each other, we be here for each other. We support each other. We have a tendency in the body of Christ now, we wanna beat each other down. We're not fighting the devil. We're not fighting the enemy, we're fighting each other. We're fighting over doctrine. We're fighting over small things that have nothing to do with salvation. We need to come together and fight the enemy. Like you look at the hand, a hand divided, you know, the fingers divided, you can't do much damage. But when you make a fist, you pack a more powerful punch. If we come together, we can pack a more powerful punch. We are the body of Christ. We're all going to heaven together. The Bible says, how can you say you love God who you have not seen and you cannot love your brother who you see every day? So how you think you're going to enter into heaven where God is? And God is love. And you're gonna dismiss your brother, show hatred to your brother, and enter a place where there's pure love, where God is love, I bet the different. So we need to come together and help each other, pray for each other. That's part of the armor of God too, praying and making supplication for the saints. But we all need to come together and, and support each other. Like I said, I had a bad week this week. And it was someone who said something to me and it was insignificant, but to me, it was very important. And I said to her, I said, yo, you don't know, I needed that word at the time. And the person shared the word in the comment in the chat and it lifted my spirit up. So you don't know what your brother and sister are going through. So we need to be here for each other, especially with the churches and everything going on. This is church now. The Bible says, know those that labor among you. All these things, we need to be here for each other. Bear the infirmities of, of the weak. We need to be here for each other. The Bible talks about when the children of Israel went to gather manna and quells. The Bible says, he who gathered too much didn't lack anything. And he that didn't gather enough didn't lack anything because they shared what they gathered together. So you, you gather a lot, you didn't have too much because you're going to share to, with him that didn't have enough. And that's what we need to do. We need to come together and bear the infirmities of each other. Pray for each other. Lift each other up in prayer because this spiritual warfare is real. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting me. I'm not a super saint. I'm not 
high and mighty and everything, but I'm experiencing a lot of spiritual warfare. A lot of spiritual warfare. I'm sure if you are saved, you experience a lot of spiritual warfare as well. But if we come together, we could do more damage. We could do more harm to the kingdom of the enemy. We can go in there. You know, the Bible talks about how the righteous scarcely make it. We can go in there and snatch our brother and sister out of the fire and not let them fight alone. So if you think you're so strong, you think you, you know it all, go help someone else. The Bible says, you want to know if you're the greatest among you? He said you will become a servant. But now we have switched around. We we want to think we're great by becoming a king or lord over people. No, Jesus took his robe off and he washed the disciples' feet. <laughs> this is the king of kings, the lords of lords, God from heaven. And he was washing the disciples' feet. But now we want to appear great and we want people to wash our feet. No, you're supposed to become a servant. Jesus said, the least among you will be great. Let's come together and bear the infirmities of the week. This is church now. We may not never go back to going to regular church. Amen, yeah, amen. We might not never go back to church. Never go back to going back to the building. It may not go back to normal. It may never go back to what we knew before the corona and everything. So how would you keep in contact with the people? How would you build them up? How would you know what your brother and sister are going through? So let's let's come together. And that's all I wanna say, you know, we're going through the fire, man, as like the Hebrew boys and like Peter talked about, but just know their clothes came out, didn't smell like smoke, the fire didn't harm them, and God will bring you through the fire also. It may not seem like it right now, like you did, like the, the disciples didn't notice Jesus at the shore. You may not notice what God is bringing you through right now, but God will see you through. He will work all things together for your good. And the Hebrew boys, after they went through the fire, Nebuchadnezzar promoted them. So as you go through your testing and your trials, God will promote you. God will elevate you. <laughs> so continue to hold on to Jesus Christ. I appreciate you guys coming. Like I said, I'm going to end on that note. But keep me in prayer. Keep all of the body of Christ in prayer. And let's keep looking up, you know, because our Redeemer draws near. We have to hold on. They said, he who endures until the end, the same shall be saved. We have to endure the temptations, the trial, the persecutions. And these persecutions, they're going to get worse. <laughs> There's going to come a time when... You can't read the Bible, you can't go to church, you can't do anything, you're gonna be killed for the faith. And if you can't hold on now, how you gonna hold on when they threaten you to get the mark of the beast or get the mark in your hand or in your forehead or you can't buy and sell when you have a family to feed and all these things. How would you get by then if you can't get through now? You know, I'm a pre, I'm a pre trip though, I believe, you know, God will save us from the tribulation, but I believe we will go through some of the tribulation. So how would you get through if you can't get through these trials now? So just hold on to Jesus Christ. You will get to the other side. But like I said, just continue to pray for me that I may decrease, that Jesus Christ may increase, that he'll draw all men unto him. And always remember, head always up. And y'all go check out the merch at jonline.store you know i have a clothing line christian clothing line head always up all seven stand eight you know go check out that that christian clothing you go there you buy you make a purchase you use the code take 10 t-a-k-e 10 like you get a 10 percent discount on anything you purchase there wait a minute wait 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 before i end this my mother told me when I was younger, when you go in people's house, you make sure you speak to the people. You guys come in my house and you haven't spoke to me. The way you can say hello to me is to hit the like button. <laughs> Continue to pray for me that I may decrease, that he may increase, that he'll be lifted up in my life, that he'll draw all men to him. And always remember, head always up. Online.store, you can find the best in Christian motivation apparel. 